the face of innocence, Ashley Martinson's face, at least for a time. According to friends, when she moved to Rhinelander, Wisconsin at the age of 16, she seemed like your fairly typical teenage girl, if not a little on the shy side. I met her on the bus. Kind of seemed like she had nobody to talk to, so I thought I'd be a friend and go say hi. He lived just a mile down the road from the home she shared with her mom, Jennifer, and stepdad, Thomas Ayers. So Thomas was not Ashley's biological father. Correct. So he was father too. Thomas was the father of the other three children in the home. Did Ashley feel responsible or protective of those little girls? Well, I think that she considers them her little sisters and they consider her their big sister. So they had been around each other long enough to have formed that relationship. But like a lot of girls her age, Ashley started to go through some big changes. Dark makeup, dark clothes, even darker thoughts. She had all kinds of different drawings, but they were also very dark. How dark? Very dark. Like scary monsters. <laughs> she drew things that would make me, I would not want my little kids to see them. And then there were her poems, disturbing words she wrote under the name Vamp Chick. They say one of us is to blame. You're holding that knife covered in blood. I'm laughing off the pain, wondering which one of us is guilty if we're both totally insane. You're holding that knife covered in blood. That's a wee bit graphic for her, but okay. Indeed. But the morbid blog posts, the dark sketches, were they all signs of a twisted soul or just normal teenage curiosity? And where do you think that was coming from? I think that's what she was into. That was just her interest. Either way, as Ashley approached her 17th birthday, the darkness seemed to be taking over. Her eyes would be usually open, staring at the back of the seat hopelessly. What do you think was really going on? That she has some issues at home. Ashley was constantly getting grounded, uh, getting her phone taken away. Did you know anything about her plan to leave the house? She was talking about it. And she had a couple of plans for going to a friend's house and living there. That plan became even more solidified when Ashley started seeing a young man named Ryan Sisko. The kid looked like he was maybe 17, 18, pushing it. Uh, it turns out he was 22. <laughs> I didn't know that. But before long, Ashley's parents did. I believe on March 7th, um, Ashley's stepfather, Thomas, and his, her mother, Jennifer, had found out. So it was a big family fight? Yes. There was a big family fight over Ashley dating this 22-year-old boy? Yes. According to reports, Ashley took off but didn't get far. He went and picked her up and brought her back to the house. At the time, Ashley was sent to her room. So then she goes to her room, Thomas leaves the house, and then comes back in and asks, where is she? And the mother says she's upstairs, and he goes upstairs, and that's when this all begins. 911, where is your emergency? It's not until the next day, March 8th, when 911 dispatchers get a series of strange calls from somewhere in Rhinelander. 911, where's your emergency? Hello, this is 911. So we received numerous hang up calls, and we were trying to call back and get a location, but because the cell phone coverage was bad in that area, it was very difficult. Then finally, a connection. 911, where's your emergency? Hello? At my house. Moments later, <laughs> Police are racing to the home of Ashley Martinson. We thought there might be a shooter in the upstairs. Uh, we also knew that there were three children uh, that were also inside the house. Downstairs, you wouldn't have known that anything had happened. But once you approach the staircase and go upstairs, it was a mess. Shotgun on the bedroom floor. A blood-soaked knife tangled with hair. Thomas and Jennifer Ayers, brutally murdered in their own home. There was blood everywhere. There was brain matter scattered across the upstairs. 
it's obvious from the scene that there was a lot of rage, a lot of anger. What was becoming even more obvious, who was responsible? Where was Ashley? She was not there. Jennifer's daughter and Thomas's stepdaughter, 17-year-old Ashley Martinson, was nowhere to be seen. On the run, it appeared, with the boy she'd been seeing, 22-year-old Ryan Sisko. She became the number one suspect because she couldn't be located anywhere. What police do find are Ashley's three younger sisters still huddled inside the house. According to the girls, after one of them saw Ashley stabbing their mother, Ashley put them all in their room with food and juice and then tried to keep them there. It was a full day before the oldest sister finally called 911. What are those three little children doing in the house with two dead people? At one point, they got out and walked around the house, walked up and up to their parents, and then went back into the room and slept in that room until the next morning. What do you make of their behavior? I think they were afraid. They were afraid that Ashley was still in the house. But as police soon learn, Ashley left shortly after the killings, hiding out with Ryan at her friend Jonathan Rasmussen's house just a mile or so down the road. John does remember seeing deep cuts on Ashley's hand and leg, but it wasn't until the next day that both he and his dad learned how she got them. It's all over Facebook that Ashley killed her parents. It was like somebody popped a balloon and I didn't know what was going on. What he did know was where Ashley might be going, and before long, authorities did too. Ashley and her friend, uh, Ryan Sisko, took Thomas's uh, truck, and uh, they uh, left town and started driving down towards Tennessee. What was their plan? They were going to stay with an aunt in Tennessee and more or less start a new life. They made it as far as Indiana. Roll down the driving window. With guns drawn. Police take their prime suspect and possible accomplice down without incident. But they don't necessarily find the faces of evil they were expecting. Do you know what all this is in reference to? You do. Kind of have an idea? Yeah. You what? For what you guys are calling the murder? Yeah. Yeah, for the investigation of that. I didn't mean to kill her. I think at first when we got there, we thought that it was this teen girl that had this older boyfriend and she wanted to run off and so she killed her parents. But when you pull back all the layers, there's a lot underneath it that none of us knew about until we dug further into it. Have you met Ashley's mom before? I haven't met her dad, stepdad, or her mom. Well, they are both dead. The most surprising thing actually was that Ryan Sisko had absolutely no knowledge of the crime until they were in the state of Indiana. No, I was starting to think a dude was psychotic. So had Ryan been completely duped into becoming an accomplice to a double homicide? And what had Ashley's motives been in the first place? We didn't have any other idea who Ashley Martinson was. So all we had was walking into her bedroom, looking at her walls, looking at um, what was on the internet. Like the dark blog she wrote under the pen name Vamp Chick. Welcome to Nightmare, her homepage began. If you are ready, I will paint the streets red just for you. It seems really chilling when you read this after the murders. Yes. And that is what we looked at for the first few days, trying to figure out what was going on. The national media came here, and all we had to give them was Vamp Chick and all the crazy writings that she had done and this really dark story that was all around her. That is who we thought she was. But as investigators started digging deeper into Ashley's home life, black and white conclusions began to gray, especially when it came to her stepdad, Thomas. 
What kind of a man was Thomas Ayers? The only thing I can say to you is that he was a convicted felon for incidents involving domestic violence. And other things. And other things, yes. Things like criminal mischief, kidnapping, even sexual assault. A list of offenses going back years. So he wasn't supposed to have any firearms in the house? Correct. Did you find some? They found several firearms at the house. Even inches away from the kids' crayons and Ashley's sisters had even more insight. When he spanked you, was it hard or soft? Hard. There had been abuse going on in the home, even abuse to the mother, abuse to animals at the hands of Thomas. Like dad? Around. They talk specifically about a dog. It was irritating Thomas, and um, he eventually killed the dog. My dad told me that he shot him, and he fed him to a bear. And then there was what he'd allegedly done to the children themselves. He choked me. One time, he grabbed my neck. He choked me, and I started turning different colors. A reason to run, to get help, but to kill? And if it was some sort of revenge killing, then what about the other victim? Almost unrecognizable through all the gore, Ashley's own mother. There was an overwhelming amount of stab wounds you know, all over her body, hands, arms, legs. There were stab wounds all over her. It was clear that the only way detectives would be able to get the answers they needed would be to ask Ashley herself. And what she had to say would make everyone second guess what they thought they knew. I swear I didn't kill her. Her drawings were dark. Her blog, Nightmare, even darker. But it was the actions 17-year-old Ashley Martinson stood accused of that said the most, killing her own mother and stepfather. Father was lying in the hallway. Um, up against a closet door um, and just outside of a bedroom. As Jennifer Ayers was on the stairs with multiple puncture wounds to her body. But when police started talking to Ashley herself, she said they had it all wrong. What happened between you and your dad upstairs? Nothing. I did not kill him. In a shock to investigators, Ashley immediately denies having anything to do with the two shotgun blasts that ended Thomas Ayers' life. She would never. It was the closest thing I had to her dad. So if she had no reason to kill Thomas, who did? My mom didn't get along very well. I always hit her. Threatened to kill her. What did she say about that? She told me that she was trying to find a way out. So did Ashley's mom finally find that way out, the most dead-end way possible? She said that her mom shot her stepdad because her stepdad went berserk. After that, Ashley says she ran upstairs to find her mom standing over her stepfather's body, shotgun in hand. And then what? <laughs> but so I tried to take the gun out of her hand, and I did. I set it down, and I was yelling at her. Asked her what she did. And that's when she started yelling and blaming me. What'd she say? It was my fault. It was my fault that I'm fighting. From there, according to Ashley, it was a fight for survival with the woman who gave her life. She grabbed the knife that was on the shelf and she came after me with it. Okay, and then you fought and then you stabbed her with it? She was trying to kill me. She was trying to kill me? <laughs> if Ashley was to be believed, she just got caught up in a tragic series of events that her mother initiated. But there were a few little holes in that theory. She forgot that there were still three witnesses within the house. Ashley's three younger sisters, the same ones she tried to lock in their room after the murders, told a very different story. One that started with those first two gunshots. Your mom was not upstairs when Tom stopped. She was. No, she wasn't. Your sisters were with your mom, and they remember her saying, holy What was that? 
Without going so far as to call her sisters liars, Ashley continued to deny shooting Thomas. But still, if she really did just kill her mother in self-defense, why were there so many stab wounds? This is what I know. Fifty-two times. Fifty-two times. How come you didn't run? Two would have been enough. You could have got away. Why 52? I don't know. 52 times isn't, I'm afraid that I'm going to die. 52 times is, I know you're gonna die. A forensic pathologist would later revise that number down to 35 wounds. Overkill either way, but why? Ashley reported that she had been sexually assaulted before. By whom? One of her mother's boyfriends. This was a boyfriend from when Ashley was younger, like about nine. According to records, the boyfriend assaulted Ashley in his car while a neighbor watched. It seemed that every man that her mother chose turned around and abused Ashley in the worst ways. Correct, Ashley or her mother, and I think that when all of those emotions came out, that's how we ended up with such a horrendous attack on her mother. Officers continued talking to Ashley for hours, but it's still not until days later that Ashley finally decides to tell the whole truth, that it really was she who killed both her parents. I think that Ashley was trying to get away from there, but she had gotten in this relationship with Ryan and her parents had found out about it. And then it just started this whole horrible event. While no one was looking, Ashley retrieved one of the many loaded guns lying around the house and made a fateful decision, though not necessarily the one everyone was thinking. Her statement is that she was going to kill herself that day. Thomas leaves the house and then comes back in and he went upstairs and started banging on the door. Then according to Ashley, it was in that split second after what she claimed was a lifetime of trauma that she finally snapped. Either she opened the door or he opened the door, but the door was open when he was shot. Two times. Two times. In the neck and the head? On the side of the head. The horror continued. Then her mother comes up the stairs, and there's some kind of incident between the two of them, at which point Ashley gets control of a knife and stabs her mother between 30 and 40 times. It was a complete tragedy from almost any angle. And in one of the most dramatic moments of her interview, the full weight of it all seems to finally come crashing down. nearly five full minutes. <laughs> Ashley continues to sob. In this case, Ashley is both the victim and the killer. Yes. But then investigators find something that made them question everything once again. There is some indication in a Facebook post where she talks about um, Thomas and that she should just take a gun and shoot him. But was it really so split second after all? There is some Facebook post that Ashley had posted the day before between herself and Ryan Sisko where she talks about Thomas and that she should just take a gun and shoot him. Specifically, she wrote, I want to kill him so expletive bad, just take one of his guns and blow his expletive brains out. 
one day later, that's exactly what she did. Does that make this premeditated? In my mind, yes. She had thought about it and then carried through with the act. But the full context of the message may tell a slightly different story. Sent on the morning of what should have been a special day, Ashley's 17th birthday. It began. I woke up this morning to my stepdad beating my mom. I can't take it anymore. He's gonna kill her if she doesn't leave soon, and I don't wanna be around when that happens. So is that evidence of a teenager just blowing off steam or evidence of a teenager who ends up actually carrying it out. And that's what you have to look at. I mean, her comments were basically about um, the abuse that her mother was receiving from Thomas and that she was concerned Thomas was going to kill Jennifer. And so her remark to that was, I should just take a gun and kill him. Then this would be over. And certainly there was more evidence to suggest the killings weren't planned. The fact that Ashley had just turned 17, how pivotal was that to how she would be treated by the criminal justice system? In the state of Wisconsin, when you're 17 years old, you're considered an adult. Had she been 16 years old, she could have been waived into the juvenile system. And how close was she to this deadline? One day. Ashley Martinson is initially charged with two counts of first-degree intentional homicide and three counts of false imprisonment for trying to lock up her sisters. And what about those sisters, now orphans because of what Ashley did? Were they mad at Ashley for killing their parents? Yes. How did they express that? They asked questions like, is she in jail? Is she gonna stay in jail? Things like that. And then there were the letters the girls wrote to the judge. Their letters are very interesting. I remember being so scared when I heard my mom scream. I'm glad she didn't hurt my sisters. I thought she was going to. I think she should stay in jail until she rots. You met these girls. Is this from the heart? I believe that they are scared, very scared of Ashley because they can't put together the Ashley that they knew and the Ashley that was there the last day of their parents' lives. But in her own letter to the judge, Ashley wrote, even though I have made my sisters into orphans, I know deep down that they are now in a more safe and loving environment. I do hope that one day they will be able to forgive me. At her arraignment and facing life in prison, Ashley pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. But not long after that, her attorneys struck a deal, reducing the charges to second degree in exchange for a guilty plea. I think that, and the district attorney obviously agrees that it wasn't premeditated or he would not have agreed to drop the charges to second degree. Though the prosecution asked for a maximum sentence of 40 years, she received 23. To some, it was too light for such a horrific crime. Still others thought Ashley deserved way less. Is it wrong that some people have compassion for Ashley? I mean, I myself feel sad for her to have grown up in such a bad situation. But my job is to hold people accountable for Crimes. If every child that lived in a home that had abuse in it killed their parents, there would be a lot of dead parents. Today, Ashley Martinson is serving her time at Tachita Correctional Facility in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Since being transferred there roughly six months ago, she's received no visitors. But that was about to change. So when I first got assigned this story, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know the girl behind the headlines because I thought, could this girl be this dark or is there just a victim behind all of this? So I wrote to Ashley in prison and she wrote me back. And she said that she wanted to tell her story, that she was finally ready to tell her story. Unfortunately, our cameras weren't allowed in the prison. But what Ashley told me inside those walls was too important to not be heard. 
So after working with administrators and Ashley's social workers... Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... Ashley. ...an inmate at the Teichita Correctional Institution. We arranged to have Ashley call us. Thank you for letting me have this opportunity to tell my story. Though our own cameras weren't allowed inside, Ashley sat down with me just days ago for these exclusive new photos from behind bars. There were a lot of surprises from our two-day meeting, including the fact that since being imprisoned, Ashley has gone on to receive her high school diploma, one of the first in her family to do so. And there were even more surprises when Ashley agreed to call us and go on the record. I'm happy. And I know this sounds crazy because I'm in prison, but I feel like I'm free. I can wake up every day and know that I'm safe. Safe, she says, from a lifetime of trauma and abuse that began when she was just eight and her mom got a new boyfriend. He was extremely abusive. What did he do to you? That man, that man took everything from me. It started off with touching. Are you okay, Ashley? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just, this is hard. It's really, really hard. Ashley had trouble finding the words, but according to court documents, the man would throw things at her, burn her with cigarettes, and much, much worse. And he raped you? He did, yes. He raped me when I was nine. And Ashley says her mom, also allegedly being abused by that same man, not only failed to protect her, she may have enabled it. She would send him in to tuck me in at night or to give me a bath. She knew, she knew what was going on. Ashley says the abuse went on for roughly two years, and even though her mom eventually got out of that relationship, things didn't get any better. Thomas Ayers, tell me what he was like. You know how people say that I'm the monster? He was the monster. While Ashley fully admits Thomas never actually laid hands on her, she says what he did do was much worse. He would keep you in line, you said by beating your mother and beating your little sisters, is that correct? Yes, that is exactly what he did. That was my punishment. That was the way he knew he could hurt me. So why didn't she just leave? Well, Ashley says she tried. I was supposed to move out in with one of my friends. So I was all packed up and ready to go that day, but my stepdad stopped me. She says he found out about Ryan Cisco, and after that, she was essentially grounded for life. Work in school was my freedom. He was going to take it all away. I was going to be 100% imprisoned in that house, and I believed him. She says in that moment, she saw only one way out, grabbing a shotgun, and retreating into her room. I was sitting on my bed. And I even had the end of it in my mouth, playing with the trigger. And then I heard my stepdad. Panic, terror, Ashley felt overwhelmed. I was scared of him. I am pressing with his gun one of his precious belongings. And I thought he was gonna snap on me. And I just reacted. What did you do? I raised the gun and I pulled the trigger. Ashley didn't immediately shoot her stepfather again, as has been widely reported. Instead, she says she just wanted to get away. And I started running down the stairs and until I was on the first landing, and that's when I saw my mom. She ended up grabbing this decorative knife that was on a shelf. And the next thing I knew, the knife was in my leg. Her own mother had stabbed her, says Ashley. 
So you're wrestling with your mother, and then you get hold of the knife, and what happens? It was like, it, it was like a movie reel went off inside my head. It was like a flash of an image, memories of all the bad things that happened to me, that she put me through. And I remember stabbing her once and twice, and then I blacked out. And the next thing I knew, there's blood everywhere. That's when she says she looked up and saw Thomas. And seeing him scared me more. I thought he was going to get up and he was going to see what I did. I was scared what he was going to do. So she grabbed the gun once again. I remember pointing the tip of the gun against his head and I pulled the trigger. Boom. But in that moment, I felt the chains break around me. I was free. First time in my life, I felt that I was free. He couldn't hurt my sisters anymore. He couldn't hurt me anymore. He couldn't hurt anyone. And there she sat, she tells me, in a complete daze before remembering her sisters and securing them in their room, a move, she says, was to protect them. What's your hope for your relationship with your little sisters? I hope that one day that they can come to me and I can tell them what really happened, the truth, because I do want a relationship with them. I miss them so much. I had many more questions for Ashley, but as our time was running out, there was one moment I wanted to ask her about specifically. It was shortly after her arrest, just after partially confessing to detectives. When the investigator asks you if you would like a hug, you say yes, and you two hug for a really long time. That was probably the first time I felt safe cared for, like, everything was going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, everything was going to be okay. A lot's been said about you, and at the end of the day, you have killed two people, including your own mother. What is it that you want people to understand about you and what happened? I'm not a monster. I never meant any of this to happen. It doesn't make it right what happened. But I was just a girl, an abused girl, who was forced to make a really bad decision. I'm not the monster that they portrayed me to be.